So there's an interesting way, if you're perhaps a farmer, to hedge against some of the weather that might get thrown at you in the next little while. There are weather de derivatives. Um, they are often used by farmers to hedge against rain, for instance. Energy companies to hedge against temperatures. If you are running a natural gas or electricity company, you perhaps might not use all the natural gas that you'd like to sell in a season. Ways to hedge against that. Um, and snow removal companies. Snow ski, removal. Ski resorts, you know, hedging against how much snow snow is or is not going to fall in a season and how many skiers you're going to have on your hill. Uh, so that's all kind of interesting. We are going to talk a bit more about this because we had a warmer than normal winter. And of course, it did hurt the bottom lines in a variety of different industries. So now we are joined by Jeff Hodgson. Oh. Have we got Jeff Hodgson well, actually, yet? Actually, not just yet. We have, we've got him. Okay, so Jeff Hodgson, who is the president of the Chicago Weather Brokerage, is joining us now. Jeff, good to have a moment with you. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, it's good to have a moment to speak with you. Um, this has been a strange winter for a number of different industries. The weather derivatives, uh, essentially you're, you're creating a product on top of the commodity itself. Is that how that works? Well, that is, that, is, that is somewhat the case. Traditionally, whenever you trade a commodity, the underlying security, uh, say it's a bushel of corn or a barrel of oil, the value of your position is derived off the price of that commodity, whereas with weather derivatives, you're actually trading the volume. So it's the, it's the amount or the volume of snowfall or rainfall or in the case of temperature, the average price over the course of the month. That's what you're trading. So, for instance, if you were a ski resort um, and you wanted to protect yourself from the lack of snowfall, you would actually be short this market or you would buy puts because your, your, because your position would benefit from the lack of snow, which would be offset. Uh, in the event you had a lot of snow, you would lose in your hedge, but you would have a strong winner selling, selling lift tickets. Conversely, if you were someone that wanted to be long, Let's say you're a large shopping center and you could spend millions of dollars a year in snow removal costs. You want to protect yourself from high levels of snowfall. Therefore, you would get long the market. You would buy futures or you would buy call spreads, things like that. So, one, so you just named one of the type of weather events I can protect myself against, uh, either too much snow or not enough snow. What are the other weather events that, that I could be hedging against? Temperature is really one of the most traditional markets that's out there. Really, this was, this was kicked off. Uh, for the energy sector, uh, where in the in the winter time, obviously, if you're selling, which I think you alluded to this earlier, whenever you did the introduction, whenever you're a natural gas company, you're a utility company. The warmer it is in the winter time, like this past winter, we had the fourth warmest winter on record. You are selling much less natural gas. So, in order to hedge that, hedge those sales, you're going to want to actually get. Um, short the marketplace you would you would physically be trading that temperatures would be low so you would be buying put spreads that would pay out in the event we had lower than average temperatures or excuse me warmer than average temperatures in our case it would be lower hdds heating degree days that's how we trade that marketplace so that helps you as a as a supplier to this marketplace hedge and uh, protect your risk from mild temperatures uh, jeff if you perhaps were an investor in airline companies or whatever, you would look very carefully at their fuel hedging strategy and you'd almost, you might even write off investing in a company that doesn't have a proper hedging situation for fuel. When you're looking to invest in a utility or some of these other types of companies, are you really looking to see whether they have a good hedging program or is it not that usual? For me personally, I, you know, you really hit on a point that's very important to me that, that amazes me that people don't talk about that more often. And that is the fact that some of these companies, I don't know how they can't be hedging. When you, when you talk about the, uh, the fuel costs associated with airlines, uh, I looked at uh, some of the utility companies. And if you actually read through their financial statements, they will actually do gap earnings and non-gap earnings. So they will literally normalize their earnings where they can say, we made $100 million this quarter. But that's non-GAAP earnings. Actually, if you adjust it, they are, are, are already adjusting it based on normal weather patterns. If you look deeper in their financials, they may have only made $80 million. But they're telling you, well, actually, our adjusted earnings are $100 million, assuming that the weather would have been normal. To me, I don't know how companies can really get away with that in this era. Risk management is something that's very, very important. So I think just to kind of throw out an example, um, I look at the coal sector, especially here in the United States. As you know, the fracking that has been going on in natural gas has really decoupled natural gas prices from, uh, from the weather market. But because we have this glut of supply, and then you compound that with the fact that we've had a really, really mild winter, coal prices are, are, are off tremendously. We've also seen a lot of coal mines being shut in. 
if, if, if I were in the coal sector, I would look at this as an amazing opportunity to say, how can I mitigate my risk? Because when, when you're dealing with thermal coal that's really driven off of temperature, over the next five years, you're going to be competing against low natural gas prices. So how are you going to survive if you can manage your risk by saying, let's at least mitigate that risk by hedging using weather so that we know we can kind of normalize our earnings? We may be weaker than a lot of other industries, but if we're the strongest ones left in our industry, uh, there could be a lot of great opportunities to buy up coal mines who are getting hit, who are not hedging, and are also being affected by natural gas. So really, problems create opportunities, and this is just a way for you to manage that risk and to really take advantage of the situation. Uh, Jeff, just briefly, can you give us a sense of how big this market is? How many millions or billions of dollars worth of, of weather derivatives are out there? It's a great, it's really a wonderful question, and it's tough for me to gauge. I've heard numbers anywhere between 10 to 20 billion, but it could be much, much bigger than that. The reason I don't know uh, with certainty is, as you can probably imagine, what the CME group has really tried to do, and I think they've done a very good job doing it, they have tried to create a standardized product where people can come in here and they can trade, they can have the central clearinghouse. As you know, uh, the counterparty risk is something that's very prevalent in this, in this marketplace, and anytime you can, you, you can take away that risk, people are very interested. However, because this is a weather-related product, there are situations where uh, structures have to be so customized that it's very challenging for an exchange to list every conceivable possible product that you could trade. So there, there are a lot of transactions that are out there that are done on an OTC or over-the-counter over basis that I don't have those numbers. But based on my best estimate and people that I speak to, it's somewhere between 10 to 20 billion. But I would also argue that this marketplace has a supply demand imbalance that is significant. There is a tremendous amount of supply out there from the financial community willing to take on these trades. It's really just a learning curve to educate the end user to get them up to speed because that capacity there to take on these trades to whatever the size of the marketplace is to double, triple, that is that is that is there without question. So it's really it's really the job for people such as myself to educate the end user so that they get comfortable enough and they can understand this and more importantly they can quantify their risk and then put on a trade to actually execute that strategy. Hmm. So maybe next year I'll get someone to shovel my snow and then I'll hedge against it. Jeff, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. We're joined by Jeff Hodgson. He is president of Chicago Weather Brokerage. Of course, he joined us from Chicago.